Um, but let's get right to it. So please welcome Jessica Walker and Libby Babbitt Klein to celebrate Baby Feminist 2. <laughs> Are you in the middle and I'm here? Oh, I think yeah. we're here. Oh, this is on. Oh, great. <laughs> Hello, friends. Hello, everyone. I read you on the big screen. We're going to read a bus. Um, if there are any other kids back there, come on up. We'd love your help if you want. What's the big screen for So you're going to be able to see it in the book and on the screen. We thought this wasn't big enough for everyone to be able to see, so we thought we'd put it up here, too. What do you think? Good idea. Great. Thank you. This is for Zip. Great. Thank you. I'm going to just put it right here. All right. Does everyone feel ready to help out if you want? Let's give it a go. Let's go. Okay. Zip, can you sit down? You get to do the first one. Okay. Before she claimed her seat in history, Rosa Parks was. Zippo, can you lift that? A baby. That's right. That's right. Okay. Do you want to do the next one? Before she represented her country, Tammy Duckworth was a baby. A baby. A That's baby. right. The yeah. louder you say it, the better. Yes. Because this is a big room. Before their goals shattered records. Abby Wambach and Mia Hamm were. Would anybody like to help me lift this flap and see what they were? You want to help? You can both do it. You can both help. Why don't you lift it at the same time and yell it? What's under there? What's under there? Well, the baby. A baby. Yes. Yes, a baby. Is cute diaper, Mama? Yep, that is a cute diaper. <laughs> Before she gave voice to a silenced people, Rigoberta Menchu Tomb was a baby. A baby. A baby. Is this a baby? Wait, wait, we're gonna let someone else do the next one. Before she explained the rules of our universe, Dr. Vera Rubin was. Is there anyone in the back that wants to come help? A baby. Anyone that wants? To, anyone want to do this flap? Okay. Anyone back there? Any Oliver, do you want to do it? Yeah. Come on. Come on up. You can do it. Here you go. He was a baby. What was she? A baby. A baby. Yes. Before he united a nation, Nelson Mandela was. Anybody in the back? Me. Receive me. You guys want to come on up? You can do that one right there. A baby. You want to do it on hers too? Yeah, you can, two people can do it. That's true. All right. What was he? What was he? A baby. A baby. Yes. Very good. A baby. Before she flew across an ocean, Amelia Earhart was. One person went out. Come on over. Come on. Why don't you both do it? What was? Can you say it really loud? What was she? A baby. A baby. Yes. <laughs> A baby. Before they spoke to challenge power, Laverne Cox and Bell Hooks were. Now this is the last flap. So does everybody that wants to do a flap want to come up and you can all help together? You can. Some people can do this one and some people can do that one. We got all kinds of space. For and then flap anybody covers. else, if you're up here, you can help us. A Wait baby. for it. Okay, what is it? A baby. Can you say it really loud? A baby. That's right, Sam. A baby. A baby. Anybody else? A baby. You want to do it? What was it? Yes, a baby. All of these babies grew up to be. Who knows what they grew up to be? What were they? Yes. 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 Each one of them, each one found their own way to change the world and make it a more equal place for people of every gender. Oh, and do baby, so can you. And baby, so can you. Yay! <laughs> Thank you. Well, thanks so much, everyone, for being here.
I think we are going to do a quick Q&A with the fabulous Zibby Owens. Um, there are, as you've seen, crafts in the back, so feel free to wander, move about, get drinks, whatever you need to do. Um, and we'll, we'll just answer some questions, I guess, <laughs> that sounds good. Thank you for having me. Uh, my name is Zibby Owens. I'm the host of podcast Moms Don't Have Time to Read Books. So I wanted to find out about these amazing moms, moms-to-be. Uh, <laughs> tell everybody more about what inspired you to write both Baby Feminist and Baby Feminist 2. Um, well, we, I started thinking of this concept when Zip, who's running around somewhere, was a baby. And I was very shocked that everyone in the universe starts life as a baby. Um, and then I reached out to Jess, kind of looking for some visual help, and the concept evolved and we really became a team That's from right. the start. And tell, tell us more about your collaboration. How did you pick each other? Um, well, Libby had this great idea and she asked if I knew any illustrators. And I said, well, I'd just like to do it. So we just started working together and it was really natural and it's been an incredible collaboration all along the way. Should I even ask? <laughs> um, how, how did you pick the feminists that you've profiled in the book? You know what, we outsourced some of it to our friends. I, we, we posted a lot on Facebook saying like, do you have any ideas of feminists we should include, which was really great feedback. Um, we had a lot of feedback from our publisher who had some great ideas. Yeah. But there were lots of lists, and it was really hard to narrow down, for sure. Yes, deep, lots of, lots of research and many hours of debating amongst ourselves. <laughs> was there anyone that you tried to draw or paint? Or, I don't know what process you used, but then it didn't look good, so you decided to X them out of the book altogether? I was trying to think about that today. We do so much uh, collaboration on the front end. I would say that there's a lot of planning that goes into it, and we kind of know what's going to happen along the way. So. Uh -huh. Not really. There hasn't really been anybody that's been excluded, I guess, yeah. And so what did the process look like? Did you sit down and make all your lists together? Did you use Google Docs? Like, how did you work together so seamlessly? Um, I mean, so especially on the first book, we both had very, very small children, and we would just work together from kind of 9 to midnight after our kids were in bed. So it was very much collaborating, sitting with each other. Do you have any tips for collaboration, do's and don'ts, having survived two books? Jess always says never do anything by yourself. Never do anything um, alone. Like that. Yes. Yeah. That's nice. Um, and what is the format? How do you do all of these? Is it painting or so watercolor? Like we usually make what I call a Franken baby, which is a lot of different parts of a lot of different pictures. Like Zip's mouth is part of these babies. <laughs> like we take lots of pictures and put them together to create a baby, and then we have to come up with some kind of transition element between the adult and the baby. Um, and to get them to line up is always, you know, a lot of back and forth and thinking about scale between the adult and the baby. Um, but I scan a bunch of watercolors and just kind of piece them together digitally. So it's all done pretty much digitally. Yeah. And what's the goal behind exposing kids at this age to feminists and feminism? For me, I think it's about just introducing kids to names that they will never forget. So that I don't expect small kids to know who these people are, but I expect them to remember that was a name that was important in my family. Okay. And as they get older, to then learn more about them. Yeah, I just love that my, well, when this first book came out, my two and a half year old son knew the word feminists, and I thought that was really great and cool, so it's great. <laughs> Thanks, Ollie. Yeah. And were there any parts along the way between coming up with the idea and brainstorming to getting it on the shelf that you found really surprising in the publishing world? Everything about the publishing world was surprising. <laughs> <laughs> it was all new for both of us. So. Yeah, completely new. But it was a good, wonderful process to have been our first time. Yeah. Um, I think we really lucked out with a wonderful team. And I mean, I've learned a lot from Libby, who has a lot of the skills that I don't have as a negotiator and as a social media guru and all these things. So I've learned a lot from her. Now tell me what's a little more about your background that made you guys so perfect for this particular book. Um, I'd been working in kind of political and activist media um, and had wanted to write a feminist children's book, I think, my whole life. Wow. 
Um, I've been in the arts my whole life. I've never illustrated anything before the first baby feminist book, but it's always something that I've wanted to do. So I feel really lucky that I have this opportunity in my life to do this new thing that I kind of stumbled on. So, yeah. And would you have any advice to other aspiring children's book authors out there? Um, go, go ahead and do it. <laughs> you know, I think people tell me about their ideas a lot, and I think just finish your manuscripts. You've probably got a good book. Yeah. I think you do so much reading of children's book, books when you have young children that it's exciting um, <laughs> to say, hey, I could try that. I can yeah. do that and just go for it, right? What do you think? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, it's a giant. <laughs> <laughs> Will there be a baby feminist three, four, five, six? How long are we keeping this going? We are working on other projects, but I think the feminists are now the baby feminists. The baby feminists are in a good spot. Yes. Can you talk about your other projects or not yet? I, I think we're not quite ready. Okay. All <laughs> but right. we hope to have more books. <laughs> awesome. Um, what's the most rewarding thing, that, uh, thing that's come out of publishing these two books so far? Um, I guess getting to read them to my kids yes. is really fun. And all of you. And all of you. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> um, anything else you want other people Anyone to Anyone else? Any? Enjoy the book. Enjoy. Thank you so Thank much for you coming. Thank you all so, so much. Um, <laughs> Get your hair.